The question, who discovered America? May sound simple, but science and DNA tell a very different story. Recent breakthroughs in ancient DNA analysis show that America wasn't discovered once, but repeatedly over 20,000 years by multiple groups whose genetic fingerprints still exist in modern populations. In 2018, scientists extracted DNA from an 11,500-year-old infant found in Alaska that revealed an entirely unknown population of early Americans. In 2021, researchers analyzing footprints at White Sands National Park pushed back the timeline of human presence in the Americas by thousands of years. And just last year, geneticists discovered that some Native American populations carry DNA from a mysterious extinct human species that vanished before recorded history. Today we're going to uncover the hidden genetic history of the Americas. We'll explore how ancient migrations, forgotten voyages, and chance encounters created the most complex human genetic mixing experiment in world history. By the end of this video, you'll understand how your own DNA might carry secrets from civilizations that mainstream history books completely ignore. Let's begin with the earliest known inhabitants of the Americas, and the archaeological sites that reveal their incredible journey. Thousands of years ago, long before recorded history, these continents were home to people whose genetic story began in the frozen wilderness of Ice Age Siberia. Using advanced DNA analysis, scientists have traced the ancestry of Native Americans back to these ancient populations and uncovered how their genes shaped the foundation of life across the Americas. What they found was remarkable. The ancestors of Native Americans split from East Asian populations around 23,000 years ago. But here's where it gets interesting. These early people didn't immediately rush into the Americas. Instead, they spent thousands of years living in a place called Beringia, it was a massive land bridge that connected Asia to Alaska during the Ice Age. Today this land bridge is completely underwater, covered by the Bering Sea. But back then, it was a vast grassland larger than Texas and Alaska combined. The Upward Sun River site in Alaska has provided some of the most important evidence for this ancient population. As mentioned earlier, in 2013, archaeologists discovered the remains of two infants dating back 11,500 years. When scientists extracted DNA from these ancient bones, they found something unexpected. These children belonged to a previously unknown population called the Ancient Beringians. Their genetic signature was distinct from all other Native American groups. This discovery proved that multiple distinct populations lived in Beringia before entering the Americas. The Yana rhinoceros horn site in northern Siberia, dating to 32,000 years ago, has revealed the ancient North Siberian ancestry that contributed to this unique genetic mix. Stone tools and mammoth remains at this site show how these ancient people adapted to extreme Arctic conditions. When sea levels rose and Beringia began to disappear around 15,000 years ago, these people finally moved into the Americas. And they moved with incredible speed. The White Sands National Park in New Mexico has revolutionized our understanding of this migration. As mentioned earlier, in 2021, scientists published evidence of human footprints embedded in ancient lake sediments. These footprints date to between 21,000 and 23,000 years ago. The prints show adults, teenagers, and children walking alongside giant ground sloths and mammoths. Some tracks show humans stalking these massive animals. Other prints reveal people carrying heavy loads across the landscape. The White Sands evidence pushes back the timeline of human presence in the Americas by at least 6,000 years. But it's not just footprints. The Monte Verde site in Chile excavated by archaeologist Tom Dillahay, has provided evidence of human occupation dating to 14,500 years ago. The site contains stone tools, wooden implements, and even preserved pieces of meat. Most remarkably, researchers found medicinal plants at Monte Verde that came from locations hundreds of miles away. This proves the early Americans had extensive trade networks and sophisticated knowledge of plant medicine. The Paisley Caves in Oregon have yielded 14,300-year-old human DNA extracted from ancient feces. This coprolite evidence shows that people were living in the Pacific Northwest much earlier than previously thought. At the Galt Archaeological Site in Texas, researchers have uncovered stone tools dating back 16,000 to 20,000 years. The tools show sophisticated craftsmanship and include projectile points, scrapers, and blades. The site also contains evidence of red ochre pigment, suggesting early Americans engaged in symbolic behavior and possibly body painting. But the genetic story gets even more mysterious when we look at something called Denisovan DNA. 
Denisovans were an ancient human species that lived in Asia tens of thousands of years ago. Most people have never heard of them because they went extinct long before recorded history. Scientists first discovered Denisovans in 2010 when they analyzed DNA from a tiny finger bone found in Denisova Cave in Siberia. This cave, located in the Altai Mountains, has provided evidence of Denisovan occupation spanning over 200,000 years. Here's the incredible part. Some Native American groups still carry tiny fragments of Denisovan genes in their DNA today. The Denisovan genetic contribution is highest in populations from Papua New Guinea and Australia, where it reaches up to 5% of the genome. But traces also appear in some Native American populations, particularly those from South America. The Caritiana people of Brazil carry about 0.2% Denisovan ancestry. The Surui, also from Brazil, show similar genetic signatures. These genetic fragments were passed down through interbreeding that happened in Asia, long before the migration to America. The Denisova cave itself has revealed remarkable evidence of this ancient interbreeding. In 2018, scientists found a bone fragment from a girl whose mother was Neanderthal and father was Denisovan. This 90,000-year-old hybrid individual, nicknamed Denny, proves that different human species regularly interbred. Scientists believe these ancient genes helped the first Americans adapt to harsh Ice Age conditions. The Denisovan genes may have provided better immune responses, improved oxygen processing at high altitudes, and enhanced cold tolerance. The EPAS1 gene, inherited from Denisovans, helps people process oxygen more efficiently at high altitudes. This genetic adaptation is found in Tibetan populations and may have helped early Americans survive in mountainous regions. Another Denisovan gene variant affects immune system function and appears in some Native American populations. Now, the migration story isn't as simple as one group walking across a land bridge. As mentioned before, genetic and archaeological evidence suggests there were actually multiple waves of migration into the Americas. The main route was through Beringia, but scientists have found evidence of something called the Pacific Coastal Route. The Heilsuk Trike Island site in British Columbia has provided evidence of continuous human occupation for 14,000 years. This coastal site contains shell middens, stone tools, and evidence of sophisticated marine resource exploitation. The site's location on an island proves that early Americans had boats and maritime technology. The Channel Islands off California have yielded even earlier evidence of coastal migration. Arlington Springs on Santa Rosa Island has produced human remains, dating to 13,000 years ago. The presence of humans on these islands, 13,000 years ago, proves they had advanced seafaring capabilities. The Daisy Cave site on San Miguel Island contains evidence of human occupation spanning 11,000 years. Archaeologists have found fish hooks, shell beads, and remains of dolphins, seals, and sea otters. This evidence shows that early coastal peoples had sophisticated marine hunting technologies. Small groups of people traveled along the Pacific coastline in primitive boats, following kelp forests that provided rich marine resources. This kelp highway theory explains how people could have rapidly traveled from Alaska to South America along the coast. The Cabrada Jaguay site in Peru has provided evidence of maritime adapted peoples living on the South American coast 13,000 years ago. The site contains fishing nets, hooks, and remains of anchovies and sardines. When scientists studied ancient burials in Alaska, they found something fascinating. The people they call ancient Beringians split into two main genetic branches after entering the Americas. The Anzic One burial in Montana, dating to 12,600 years ago, represents one of these early genetic lineages. This young boy was buried with distinctive Clovis stone tools and red ochre pigment. His DNA shows he belonged to the ancestral population that gave rise to all Native American groups south of the ice sheets. The genetic analysis revealed that Native Americans split into northern and southern lineages around 15,000 years ago. One branch became the Northern Native American lineages, including groups in Alaska, Canada, and the Northern United States. The other became the southern lineages that populated Central and South America. The Spirit Cave Mummy in Nevada, dating to 10,600 years ago, provides evidence of this early genetic diversification. His DNA shows clear relationships to modern Native American populations, particularly those in Central and South America. Each group adapted and evolved independently as they spread across the continent. The Kennewick Man, found in Washington State and dating to 9,000 years ago, initially caused controversy when some claimed he looked European. 
but detailed genetic analysis published in 2015 definitively showed he was most closely related to modern Native American populations, particularly the Colville tribes of the Pacific Northwest. But let's talk about one of the most controversial theories in American prehistory. It's called the Solitrean Hypothesis. Some scientists once proposed that Ice Age Europeans, from what is now France and Spain, actually reached North America by travelling across the frozen North Atlantic. The theory was based on similarities between Solutrean stone tools from Europe and Clovis points from North America. The Solutrean culture existed in southwestern Europe between 22,000 and 17,000 years ago. Sites like Logerie Haute in France have yielded sophisticated stone tools with distinctive flaking patterns. Proponents of the Solutrean hypothesis pointed to the Cactus Hill site in Virginia, which has produced stone tools that some claimed were older than Clovis. The Meadowcroft Rock Shelter in Pennsylvania has also yielded controversial early dates that some used to support European first theories. Most geneticists today reject this theory based on overwhelming DNA evidence. But there's one puzzling piece of evidence that keeps the debate alive. Certain Native American tribes carry a genetic marker called haplogroup X2A. This mitochondrial DNA haplogroup has distant similarities to some European lineages. The haplogroup X2A appears in about 3% of Native Americans, with higher frequencies in some northeastern tribes. The Ojibwe people of the Great Lakes region show relatively high frequencies of X2A. Some Sioux populations also carry this genetic marker. The marker also appears in some ancient Native American remains, including skeletons from the Windover archaeological site in Florida, dating to 7,000 to 8,000 years ago. It's possible this represents forgotten contact between Europe and America that happened thousands of years before the Vikings. But most scientists believe X2, A represents an ancient Asian lineage that was carried to the Americas during the initial migration. The evidence is weak and controversial. But it shows how complex the genetic history of the Americas really is. Speaking of the Vikings, let's talk about the first confirmed European genetic impact on the Americas. By the 11th century, Norse explorers had reached the coast of Newfoundland. They established a settlement called Lons o Meadows. This wasn't just a temporary camp. Archaeological evidence shows they lived there for several years and possibly decades. The site was discovered in 1960 by Norwegian explorer Helga Ingstad and his archaeologist wife Anne Stein Ingstad. Excavations revealed eight buildings constructed in typical Norse style. The largest building was 28 metres long and contained five rooms. Archaeologists found a bronze pin, iron boat nails, and slag from iron smelting. These artefacts proved beyond doubt that Vikings had established a permanent settlement in North America. Carbon dating placed the occupation between 990 and 1050 AD. The site also contained evidence of ship repair, indicated by iron rivets and wood chips. But Lons o Meadows wasn't the only Norse site in North America. The Point Rosy site in Newfoundland has yielded possible evidence of another Viking settlement. Archaeologists have found ironworking evidence and a stone hearth that may be Norse in origin. The Tanfield Valley site on Baffin Island has produced Norse artifacts including iron ship rivets, wet stones and chain mail. These finds suggest Viking exploration extended much further than previously known. The settlement was small and didn't last long, but it was long enough for some genetic mixing to occur. Here's how we know. Some modern Icelandic people carry genetic signatures that are consistent with Native American maternal DNA. The study, published in the American Journal of Physical Anthropology, analyzed mitochondrial DNA from Icelanders. Researchers found that about 1% of Icelanders carry the C1E haplogroup, which is typically found in Native Americans. The genetic signature appears to date to around 1000 AD, exactly when Vikings were active in North America. Scientists believe this DNA came from a Native American woman who was brought back to Iceland from either Vinland or Greenland. The Icelandic sagas actually mention Native American captives being brought back to Greenland and Iceland. The saga of Eric the Red describes encounters with people they called Skraelings, their term for Native Americans. The genetic evidence is minimal, but it proves that Vikings and Native Americans had direct contact and interbreeding centuries before Columbus. This creates a fascinating genetic bridge between the Old World and New World that most people don't know about. The Dorset culture of the Arctic may have been the native people who interacted with Vikings. 
Dorset sites in Greenland and the Canadian Arctic have yielded Norse artefacts, proving contact occurred. The Sandon site in Greenland has produced Dorset-style carvings made from walrus ivory. But Vikings weren't the only pre-Columbian people to reach the Americas. Recent genetic discoveries have revealed one of the most amazing contact stories in human history. Around 1200 AD, Polynesian voyagers somehow made contact with South Americans. Scientists discovered this by analyzing DNA from Easter Island and comparing it to indigenous Colombian populations. The study, published in Nature in 2020, analyzed genomes from 807 individuals from 17 Pacific Islands and 15 Native American populations. The genetic signatures appear strongest in the Zenu people of Colombia. But here's what makes this discovery so incredible. Nobody knows for sure who made the journey. Did Polynesians sail east to South America? Or did South Americans somehow travel west across thousands of miles of open ocean to reach Polynesian islands? The evidence suggests contact went both ways. Polynesians were growing South American sweet potatoes before Europeans arrived in either place. The sweet potato, known as Kumara in Polynesian languages, originated in South America. But it was being cultivated in Polynesia by 1000 AD, centuries before European contact. The Bellows site in Hawaii has yielded sweet potato remains dating to 1000 to 1200 AD. This means there was an active maritime network connecting the Pacific Islands with the American mainland. Polynesians were master ocean navigators who used sophisticated techniques to cross vast distances. The traditional Polynesian voyaging canoe, or va'a, could travel thousands of miles using only wind power. These double-hulled vessels were incredibly stable and could carry dozens of people plus supplies. Polynesian navigators used a complex system of reading ocean swells, wind patterns and star positions. They could determine their location and direction even in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. The Hokulea voyaging canoe has recreated many of these ancient journeys in modern times. In 1976, the Hokulea sailed from Hawaii to Tahiti, using only traditional navigation methods. The successful voyage proved that ancient Polynesians could have made regular long-distance ocean crossings. Modern genetic analysis shows that Easter Islanders are about 75% Polynesian and 25% Native American. It's proof that the Pacific Ocean wasn't a barrier. It was a highway for ancient genetic exchange. When Columbus reached the Caribbean in 1492, he didn't just begin an age of exploration. He triggered what scientists call one of the greatest genetic collisions in human history. Columbus made four voyages to the Americas between 1492 and 1504. His first landing was at Guanahan in the Bahamas, which he renamed San Salvador. He encountered the Tano people, who had lived in the Caribbean for over a thousand years. The Tano had a sophisticated society with complex chieftains, extensive trade networks, and advanced agricultural techniques. They cultivated maize, cassava, and sweet potatoes on raised fields called kunukos, Scattered throughout indigenous populations from the Amazon to the Andes, researchers have identified genetic markers that belong to no known human species, not modern humans, not Neanderthals, not Denisovans, not any hominin we've ever discovered. These populations left genetic signatures that diverged from our human tree hundreds of thousands of years ago. Yet somehow their DNA persists in living people today, like encrypted messages from Earth's deepest past. As mentioned before, the most puzzling discovery came when analyzing the genomes of the Surui, Caritiana, and Zavante peoples of Brazil. They carry between 1 to 2% of their DNA from an unknown ancestor that separated from other human lineages over 300,000 years ago, long before modern humans are thought to have even evolved. This phantom DNA doesn't match any fossil evidence we've found, suggesting entire species of humans lived, thrived and vanished without leaving a single bone for us to discover their only monument being the genetic echoes in modern populations. What's even more extraordinary is that different Native American groups carry different phantom genes, implying multiple unknown human species may have reached the Americas in waves we can't yet comprehend. Perhaps during ice ages, 50,000, 100,000 or even 200,000 years ago. Until scientists can trace these phantom DNA sequences back to their source identifying which unknown human species they came from, when they lived, and how they reached the Americas, the question of who truly discovered this continent remains unanswered. If you liked this video, please leave a comment below and let me know which genetic discovery surprised you the most. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.